All right, so as we get started, the first thing to notice if you take a look, and I believe Mr. Breeding said this yesterday, is this isn't even operational anymore. All right? We also don't need this. We don't need sample post. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to my nav bar and I'm going to remove that sample post. There's no route for it really anyway, okay? So I'm just going to go out, like I said, to underneath the um, layouts folder and underneath the nav bar. I'm going to come in here and find there's the sample post. You can see it right here. So I'm going to grab that code that's right there. In mine, it's lines 13, 14, and 15. Yours may be a little bit different line-wise or whatever. And I'm going to remove that. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back to my project and just refresh. And you'll notice that that's gone. Now, we are going to add some new stuff today. Because right now, there's let's face it, there's not much in there. It's home and there's new posts. But again, now everyone can go in and do a new post. So what we want to be able to do is we want to put a new link in here. We're going to do that momentarily, all right? But what we want to do is we want to allow you to register, all right? And eventually we'll set it up so that once you've registered, you won't be able to register again, uh, you know, or I should say this. Once you've registered and you've logged in, you won't see register on there. Does that make sense? You'll see log out, all right? We're going to be getting to that in the next couple days, all right? My hope is that we finish this by next Tuesday. That's my hope. We'll see if it, you know, if it, if it works like that or not, depending on today and tomorrow. If we get done to the, today and tomorrow, what I hope to get done today and tomorrow, then Monday, all that's really going to be left is going to be to add error messages when you, when you do something. We'll bring that stuff in on Monday, and that, that'll probably take a little bit, and then we'll finish it up on Tuesday, all right? And then Wednesday, I'll be here, and it'll be lab the entire period. Thursday and Friday, whether you come or not, again, is up to you, but they'll both be considered lab periods, all right? And I'm not gonna make this due by the end of this week. No, it'll be due some like, like either at the end of the following week or whatever. But I'm, I have to still write up the, the requirements for that. I wanna wait until we're all finished before I write up the requirements, all right? Okay. So, like I said, one of the first things that we want to do is we want to create a register.ejs. Now, that register.ejs is going to be very similar in nature to the create.ejs, to the create one. It's not going to be identical, of course, but it's going to be similar. So what I'm going to do is under, under, um, under my views right here, so under views, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a new file. And I'm going to call it register.ejs. All right. And as you can see, it's open. Let me close a couple of these things that I've got open right now. It can make it a little confusing. All right. But like I said, it's very similar in nature to create.ejs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up create.ejs. And I'm going to do a control A, control C to copy it. And I'm going to put it into register.ejs. Now we're going to make a bunch of changes to it, as you'd probably guess. All right. But at least it gave me a starting point. That makes sense to everybody? Okay. All right. And we can do the, the natural stuff first. For instance, you know, we can come in here. What you put in here is up to you, but this is the H1. This isn't what appears on our nav bar. So I'm going to put in here register new user. Now, again, hopefully what I'm saying right now is resonating with you and it's making sense. We're doing a lot of this together. I realize that. When we get into React, which is not going to be next week, but the following week, we're also going to do a project together. All right? And then we are going to do one more project together. But I'm going to keep having you build off of this. Now, if you think this really stinks, I hate the way you're doing this. Well, one thing I have to do is with next week being the halfway point, I, I don't know if you remember, but I've, I've created my own little um, eval sheets, all right? And what I'll, what I'll try to do for next week is give you all printer permissions, and I'll leave the room for 10 minutes, and you can all fill them up. Just be honest. If you think, man, this class sucks, 
You should write that down, but if you think that's the case, write down why. Don't just say it sucks. All right? Okay. So again, I changed this from add new post or wherever it, whatever it said to um, register new user. Now, we're going to have to make some other changes in here. First thing, you may not have this in yours. I don't remember if I told you this or not, okay? But I should have. And you probably won't need it in here, but we did need it. Remember, agree or, agree or disagree, that when we create a new post, the image technically is considered multimedia. An image file is technically considered multimedia. That's what this is saying. This encryption type equal multimedia slash form data says that at least potentially what we're working with is going to contain form data. All right? I'm sorry, multimedia data. All right. So this won't be, you know, we don't want this to say post or post store or post users or post whatever. We want this here is going to say register user. Why? Because that's pretty much what we're doing right there. All right? So what do we have in here? Well, first of all, remember, originally we had, you know, from what we had, we had the what? We've got the title and we've got the body. Everybody agree with that? Okay? And this body that's in here, this body right there, okay, that, that's a text field. Well, when you're registering somebody, you don't need a text field. Also, when you're registering somebody, we really and truly won't need this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the body and I'm going to grab the image. Make sure you're doing it register and not create. All right, so make sure you're in the right file. And I'm just going to remove them. All right, so what's in here right now? This thing with title. See that? So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to make... I'm going to put it right below where I am. So I've got two things that both say title. Why? Because one's going to say username and one's going to say password. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, because we're going to have a very simple login screen or register screen where you'll have to provide your username and your password. Now, we, we could be very succinct here in that what I mean is we could set it up so that you put in your name rather than your username. And once you put in your name, we could create a username for you. See what I'm saying? All right. But, and, and eventually, we'll set this up so that the username must be unique. So in other words, if I come in as Jeff Scott, or let's just say Jeff, Jeff S., and somebody else tries to register as Jeff S., they won't be allowed to do that. They'll get an error message. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So what, what do we have to change here? Well, let's just take it from the top. I'm going to move all this over so you can basically see everything. All right, ID, we don't want that ID to be title anymore. It'll just be username. The name will be username. All right. Now, it's a simple login screen, so I don't even think we need this placeholder, to be honest with you. If somebody's registering and they don't have a clue as to how to register, they probably shouldn't be registering anyway. All right. Maybe you disagree with that. Maybe you agree. I don't know. But so I just did that. Okay. So I've got username, username, type equal text, and that's required. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is change this because the name should be username. Now, if you want a colon after it, I don't care. Put whatever you want after it. But where it says four right here, see this? It says four equal name. Make sure that says username there also. All right. Everything we've done makes sense so far to everybody? All right. And then we can do the same thing. We can put username here where it says, says title. And we can say here a username is required. All right. So we've made basic changes onto here where we change the action to register user. We haven't made that route yet. We'll make that in a little bit. We, we, when you are registering somebody, of course, it's going to be a post. Um, I don't think we need this, but I just copied it from the last, so I'm just going to leave it in there. All right? And then this stuff from the top, ID equal username, name equal username, 
type is text, and required is set. Then the label is username, username. Remember this name right here, you should remember this, that name right there has to be the same as this name up here. All right, why do you do that? Because then if you click on the label, it automatically puts you inside of the text field. All right, it's not that it's anything magical other than that that happens. So then we, what we put in here, username required and a username is required. So everybody's with me, right? All right. So let's do the second one. Well, this second one is going to be password. So I'm going to start by going down here and I'm going to change this to password. All right. I'm going to change this to password. Does everybody remember? Oops, I don't know what I just did there. Um, does I'm asking you this. Does everybody remember that... Oh, good golly. I hate the way this... Okay, that's fine. Word. All right, so that'll have to be password. This will have to be password. And hopefully you remember there is a password type. All right. And it'll show probably as just black circles. All right. It used to show as asterisks. And again, I don't think we need any placeholder in here. If you disagree, then leave it in. Not hurting my feelings anyway, one way or the other. But we've come in here and we said password for the ID, password for the name, password for the type. All right. Then the label for equal, remove that word name and change it to password. All right, remove the actual thing that says title and make that password. All right, and then finally in here, we want to say password required. And again, a password is required. Now, I'm just asking this. I'm not trying to insult anyone or anything else. Does everything we just did make sense to people? Is there anybody that has any questions on any of that? All right, because I think sometimes what I'm very uh, guilty of is going on and maybe not spending enough time saying, does anybody have any questions on that? All right, okay. Good time to do a file save right there. And for a while at least, the only thing I want you to remember if you look up here is this form action. Because later, when we set up our route, it's got to match that. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. And, and what I mean is, like, in create right here, remember for create, when we set that up, I don't even know where the heck that is. There, post store. In one of our routes, we had to have it go to post store, right? All right. And I think that was the store post. So let's look. This says slash post slash store. And if I go over here to my controllers, and I've got... My post controller, all right. In inside of the where is it? In my server.js file, all right. In there, someplace I'm going to see there. There, post store. See that? So I'm equating that line right there. Post store is equating with that line right there. Does that make sense to everyone? In much the same way. Look on the screen, please. This right here is going to have to equate to something in just a minute in here that's going to look similar to that. One thing I did, if you notice in here, I put all my consts together. And I think you all know this, all right? Sometimes, I mean, I, I get accused of a lot of different stuff, but that said, you don't need to use the word controller in here for the name. See what I'm saying? It's, you know, you also don't even need to, need to use it in the file name. But since it's part of the controller's folder, that's why I put them in both. So you may not like the names I've used, and if you don't, then use your own. That's okay, but you're going to have to change your code in the, in the other places accordingly. So I put all my consts up here, then my app.get or my, you know, etc. and I'm looking at these. These look like, some of these look like they're wrong, but we'll, we'll see. All right? It looks like there should be some app.posts in there, and I don't see any but one. But we'll, we'll look at that in just a bit. Like I said, to my knowledge, it's all working right now. All right, and this is, this is showing the, the, the new post. This is showing our homepage. This is showing an individual post. 
and this should be showing the screen that brings up when we want to create a new post. This is when we actually create the new post. Does all that make sense? All right. So I'm going to come in and under the controllers folder, let me close a couple things. I just want to make sure I've got enough room and you can see what I'm doing here. All right. So I'm going to come in and under my controllers, I'm going to add a new controller. So I'm going to right mouse click on the controllers folder and choose new file. All right. And this is for a new user, so I called it new user controller.js. Maybe not the best name in the world, but I thought it was at least indicative of what it is we're doing here. All right. So there's that. And so we've got this brand new file. It's not a big file. Literally has three lines in it. We're going to do the, the module.exports. And again, remember what module.exports does is it's going to make this file, once it gets imported into another file, it's going to take everything that's in here and make it available to another file. So I'm exporting it here so I can import it someplace else, in other words. All right. And we say equal. We've got our request and our response. And we'll follow that with the fat arrow function. All right. And what? Okay. And we just want to do a res.render. And hopefully, eventually, this will bring up our register page. And again, you will notice if you look in here, all right, that the res is not grayed out, the rec is grayed out, because we're not doing anything with our request object, we're only doing it with the response. If you want to, because some people think what I did is, for lack of better words, a little impure, if you want to, you can put a paren here, and you can put another paren there. Some books will show you always do that. And other books are like, whatever, okay? I'll leave it in there. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to help anything. It should work fine with it. It should work just fine without it. All right? So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go back to the server.js file. Now, I think it's easier. You may or may not agree with this, but I'm just going to grab the last one that I put in here. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard, and I'm going to paste it in, and this will be my new one in just a second. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here in just a second. Make sense to everybody? All right, so I have to change this. I don't want this to be store post controller. No, this is my new user controller. All right, and so will this be new user controller. All right, and after I've done that, after I've done that, I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put in the stuff for it. Now, normally, all right, you would say in here, um, slash register or whatever, all right? But we're going to put in because technically there's authentication that has to be done here, all right? After we go and register a new user, we've got to make sure they put in a login or a username. We've got to make sure they put in a password, etc. So rather than just register, I'm going to put in here auth slash register and then this, all right? So, kind of the big reveal, so to speak. So I'm going to save this. All right, I'm going to go back to the program itself here. I'm going to refresh. And it's not there. So maybe I, I missed something. I don't think I did. But let's take a quick look. First of all, let's see if, I, if, if this is running. It is, but it's telling me that it doesn't like something in my server.js file on line 15. All right. But that was a while ago, as you can see. So is it, it is running. OK, so that isn't the problem. In fact, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start it up again. That way, if, if for some reason I have a problem, I'll be able to, you know, this is just today's stuff. I left it up yesterday. All right, so that's working. But I'm not seeing in here, I'm not seeing my new link. I thought I would be seeing my new link right here. OK, 
The sample post link is gone. That's good. All right. We should now have home, new post, and new user links. I don't see a new user link. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out why we don't see a new user link. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and double check. So I'm going to go back to here. It is possible that when I was in here and I was in my views layouts and I brought up the nav bar, it's possible I didn't save. Or it's possible I didn't add it. Looks like I didn't add it. See that? Well, probably it'd be a good idea then to add it. All right. So I'm going to come in here. Just copy the previous one down. So again, I went over to this post new and I copied this down. And this will now be new user. And this has got to be that same path that we just had put in. So that's got to be the path, should have to be the path, that we put in in the form itself. So let's look in our, our user form. All right. Remember, this is the one, the register is the one we just put in. And it's slash register slash user. All right. So I'm going to jump back into my nav bar. And I'm going to change that to slash register slash user. All right. Did I go too fast? Did I lose anybody or anything? I should have added that originally. I didn't. All right. And again, be as nutso in here as you want to be. And what I'm saying is probably could have tabbed that over, put the A tag down on its own line, put the LI, et cetera. If that makes it easier for you, that's the way you should be doing it. All right. And if it doesn't do float your boat at all, then don't do it. All right. So after that, I am going to do a file, save. And I'm going to go back to the project. I'm going to refresh. And there's my new user. Now when I click new user, Okay, it's telling me it cannot get slash register slash user. That's okay. We'll figure out what it is. I already think I know, but it's fine. All right. So I believe that in the server.js file, I may have given you a wrong path. Not on purpose, but I may have anyway. All right. So let's look. And in here, I think this will have to be slash register slash user. Let's double check before we change it. So I changed it there. I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to click on new user. Still doesn't like it. Cannot get slash register slash user. We're going to figure out what it is. The good news is we now have this. The bad news is it's not going where I thought it was supposed to be going. According to this, it should be going to slash register slash user. All right. And if we look in our nav bar, and we go back, slash register slash user, that looks good, OK? And if we go back and we look in our register, slash register slash user, not sure why it's not working. Again, we'll figure out what the problem is. So I originally had that in there as slash auth. And all auth means is it's going to be authenticated. But I don't think this is going to work either. Hmm. This is, we're not going to have a period like we had yesterday. Let's put it that way. All right, we're going to pretend for right now, and I will look at it during the break, but we're going to pretend for right now that it works. All right? So even if it does work, and even if we get a new user, that new user is not going anywhere because we don't have a schema for it to put it in the database. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so let's go into here, and let's go into our models folder and let's create a new model. We can call this anything we want, but since it's a new user, I'm just going to call it user.js with a capital U. All right, make sure it's in your models folder and it's going to be all right, user.js. Now, 
it's not going to be the same, but it's going to be real similar to the blog post. So I'm going to just grab everything that's in the blog post, copy it to the clipboard, close that, open up my user.js and paste it in. We'll start making changes to it in just a second. All right. But, it, you know, at least we've got a starting point right now. Now, just so you know, virtually, virtually everything that you ever do with a model is going to start with these three lines. The first line is bringing in Mongoose. The second line br is bringing in the Mongoose schema method. And the third one is where we're going to name that. Now, of course, we don't want to name this blog post schema because we already have one. All right? So we're going to just change it. Let's just call it what it is. How about user schema? All right? And for now, we're going to keep it remarkably simple. What do I mean? I'm going to show you exactly what I mean right now. And that is, we're going to have a username, and we're going to have a password. And they're both strings. That's what we're going to put in here. Then, this name is a name we give it, but we're just going to call it just what it is. We'll just call it user. All right? And then, here, this name here, is going to be the same name, so user, and this name has to be the name of our schema. All right. So, const mongoose equal require mongoose, const schema equals mongoose.schema, our user schema equals new schema with a username and a password. We end that const user equals mongoose.model user user schema and module.exports no not a blog post of user okay questions on any of that there shouldn't be anything that's gray in there anymore it should all be being accessed in other words all right questions on that anybody all right so i'm going to do a save and we may come back to that later today. I don't know, but I'm going to close that for now because I really don't need it. I'm just going to close a few things here that I don't need. Okay? All right. I'm just going to leave up my, my server.js file and nothing else. All right. Now, if you remember, after we created the, the post, after we created this yesterday, this post.ejs, all right, then we created another one that was called basically kind of a store post.ejs. All right. Well, we now we now have in our I should say they were in our, in our controllers. We had a post controller, and then we made a store post controller. Make sense? All right. Now we've come in and we've made a new user controller, but we can come in now and we can make a store user controller. All the store means, bless you, is that we're going to be storing it in the database. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to come into controllers. I'm going to right mouse click and choose new file. And I'm going to call this store user controller. Dot js. Just like that. Again, if you don't like my naming concepts, you can use your own, but then you'll have to change your code accordingly. Okay. All right. So in here, not real big. The first thing is, well, remember, do, do you remember, if you look up on the screen here, and if I, if I look at the uh, store post control, remember how the first things we did was this? Okay. I want to show you this. So I'm going to grab all three of these lines, and I'm going to copy them into our new one, into our store user controller. But we're going to change them. First thing is we don't need blog post. We need user, right, because that's the one we just made. So that will become user, and this will become slash slash models slash slash and this will be whoops user does that make sense to everyone we're just bringing in the right we're bringing in the right um, the right model all right the right schema whatever you want to say all right and this is not complete yet that's why I'm getting the error here we are going to need the path too for what we're about to do all right so let's come in here and I'll just write the code. It's about five lines. User.create.
Now, because we had this error before and I haven't fixed it yet, this may be erroneous when we try it also. If it is, don't worry about it. I'll look at my code during the break and we'll see if we can figure out what the problem is. All right, hopefully it's something fairly minor. All right. through this you'll see a couple things. I thought I needed the path because I thought when I took it out I got an error. But it's grayed which means it's technically not being used. All right, This you have to put in because it's, ex it's expecting the two parameters right there for that callback function. Even though we're not doing anything directly with user, we still need to provide the parameter. All right, this In, in English this says, okay what we want to do is we want to basically create this. So we're creating a new user. So grab everything that's in the body. Remember what's in the body. The username and the password, right? So grab it. Now, if there is an error, well, we'll probably end up going back later and grabbing those two fields and making them both required. Wouldn't that make sense that if you're going to register a new user, you'd want them to have to have a username and to have to have a password? So that's what we're accounting for here. So if there's any kind of an error, so what are we doing if there's an error? If there's an error, we're just logging it. That's not a great thing to do because um, that's fine for us because we know how to look at the console, but somebody running the program doesn't even have access to that. That's what we'll fix on Monday when we, we bring in providing errors. Um, <clears throat> when the user makes an error, we'll have an error screen that comes up or error messages that come up. All right. And then we're just going to basically return them right to where they just came from. So we're returning them to the register. Okay? If they get down to here, it worked. So we just redirect them to the home page. Now, my question to you is, everything I just said to you, does that make sense? Does the concept make sense of what we're doing? Because there's a part of me that thinks, you know, I, I don't know if I ever told you this, you probably don't care, but... Um, when I was a little kid, I, I've never been a good swimmer, all right? And my dad was a good swimmer. And I said, well, how'd you learn to become such a good swimmer? And this was my dad, okay? So you may not laugh at this, but he said, well, when I was a little kid, your grandfather took me in and he tied me up inside of a, a, of a burlap bag and he threw me in a lake. And he figured if I could get out, I could learn how to swim, all right? Well, okay, so what, what does that have, have to really do with anything, all right? As we're working on this, there's a part of me that thinks that I went from something that was this complex to something that was like this. I didn't know any other way to do it. I tried to bring it in by first having us look at MySQL, all right, just because there are plenty of Node.js applications out there that use a relational database. But then I brought in Mongoose and I tried doing it the same way, all right. And so you could start learning a NoSQL database. But then we had to do some kind of a project. Now, maybe this project was too much, maybe it was too hard, but I figured if we did the project basically as a class, it gave me a chance to walk through it with you, and I knew I'd make my share of errors, not trying to, but just because I naturally do, I knew that people like Gabriel would help me out, so when I made an error, it helped me find them. All right? But what we're going to end up doing in a couple weeks is we're kind of going to do the same thing. In that, but now we're going to use React. And all React is, is React is another way of creating a front end. What we want to eventually be creating in here, you may have heard of this term, of, we want to create a spa. No, I don't mean where you go and they, you know, they put, you know, they pamper you, etc. But we're going to build a single page application. Now, we can even build something, for example, just so you know this, that looks like this, as a single page application. And it's going to look the same. So what's the difference? Everything is basically in one file. And when you click on, and you go from here to here, what it's going to do is it's just going to replace the contents in one part of the file with the contents in the other part of the file. Who cares? 
Why should we care? Because when you use a spa, you basically get, you, you end up creating an app that's more like a mobile app, where you get immediate types of feedback, as opposed to what we're doing right now, all right? Sometimes, maybe you've had this happen to you, you go out to a website and you click on a link and you sit there and you wait for a little bit, for whatever reason, all right? We're, we're going to try to get past that. That's what we're going to be doing in the next part of the class when we have React. All right, so now we're learning to build the back end. That's what we're doing here is we're building the back end. We're going to go to React and we're going to build the front end. Why? I mean, can't we just use this? The answer is yes. But we want to eventually bring in what's called the entire MERN stack, stack rather. That's the full stack. MERN is an acronym which means MongoDB, you've had it. Express, you've had it. React, you're going to have it. And Node. And then eventually what we want to do is put all that together. And that's, that, so that's what the whole class is about. All right? Now, I, I've had my own discussions. I, I mean, I'm taping this. I'm not worried about any ramifications. But I've had my own discussions about this with Mr. Gudmisted and, I, and with Mr. Smith. And Paul Smith, to me, I mean, I like to look at myself, and all kidding aside, I'm not a super intelligent person, but I like to think I'm an intelligent person. He is a super intelligent person. And he can sit there and he can do this, where I can do this, all right? But I think sometimes what happens, and I, I don't know, this is what I've been told, and I'm not spreading rumors or anything, but half of his students really get it, and half of his students are just totally lost. I don't want to have that. First of all, I don't have that many students, where he might have three or four times the students that I have, right? But the point is, I want it when you finish this, class that you think, you know, I kind of like this, it made sense, maybe this is the area here that I want to get into. All right, so, all right, sorry to go off on a little tangent there, so let, let's do this. So we, we now have gone in, you already know this, we have already gone in here and we just made store user controller .js, right? We just did that. So let's do a file save, Every, that's everything we need in here, and I'm going to go back to server.js and I'm going to change this, or copy this rather, all right, and this is going to be a get, all right, and it's going to be the slash users slash register, and this is going to be the new one that we just created that we called store user controller. Well, if I put in that line, then I've got to put it up here too, right? So, store user controller here and here. So in other words, trying to make a, a long story shorter, I just put in line 29 and I put in line 37. Has what we done what we've done so far does it make sense to everyone? All right. The only thing is we got to get that to work now because I said I think we're going to have the same problem that we had before. I'll look at it during the break in just a minute. However, just so you know, the way that this is set up currently is, and you don't have to go back to this or anything. You don't have to go back. But currently, you know what this looks like. We just looked at this. All right. It's storing the password as just a string. That's not good practice, is it? It's storing it in what's referred to as clear text. So somebody could come in and take a look at the, at the uh, database and they could know everybody's passwords. You could say, well, if it was an administrator, who cares? Guess what, you know, have you ever had that where you forget your password and they go out and they, you, know, you, you have to ask them for a, you know, they don't give you your password back, they don't have it. They've got an encryption mechanism that will allow them to get in as you and send you a link where you can change it, but most places at least do not have your password just because of the way that they're storing things. All right, and that's basically what we want to do. So we're going to do something after the break, but I wanted to, I want to show you first as kind of a lead in for it just so you see what we're going to be working on, okay? And we're going to install another package in just a minute. So I'm going to go out to mpmjs.com. And there's different ways this can be done. 
but the one we're going to look at today is called bcrypt. All right? And let's just take a quick look at it, and then we're taking a break. It says a library to help you hash passwords. So it's exactly set up for what we want to do. All right? Now, I'm not going to read any of this to you. You can read it yourselves. Again, I've said this to you before, all kidding aside, if it's got 786,000 plus weekly downloads, it must be pretty darn tested and it must work pretty well. All right? So, we'll do this line in just a minute. You can copy that line if you want to because we're, we're, we're going to put it into our server.js in just a minute. But let's take a look at what else is in here. All right. It says, per bcrypt implementation, only the first 72 bytes of a string are used. Any extra bytes are ignored when matching passwords. Basically, what that's, what that's saying is, if you're going to have a password, you, would, you could limit it to that number if you wanted to do so. All right? It says, as with any security tool, this library should be scrutinized by anybody using it. In English, what that means is, you should really know what you're doing before you start doing it. Because remember, once you hash something, you're not going to be able to see it either. All right, that's the key thing there. All right. So again, there's the install. I'm just going to go down a little further. And here's the usage. Now, we're not going to do it exactly like this, but I wanted to mention a couple things before we take the break. So we're going to install it, and then we will add this line right here. All right. Now, when you do this, what it does when it goes through the encryption is it runs it through some kind of an algorithm. I don't know what it is. But every time it runs it through that algorithm, it's called assault. A, a, just an S-A-L-T that it's doing on there. So you can salt it in there a hundred times. But the more you salt it, the slower the program is actually going to run. So typically the number you use is the number that they're showing in there, is you use 10. All right? Excuse me. So they're showing you a way you can do it in here. You'll notice that they're setting up some stuff in here. All right? And, and they're just giving a constant for salt rounds. I'm not going to do that. But we could. There's nothing wrong with doing it. You can do it that way. You can do it this way. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The other thing I want to mention to you is later, we're going to do something like this. And what does that mean? That means that if I try logging in, and let's say that I know that there's a login that's Jeff S, but I have no clue what the password is. So I type in Jeff S, and then for the password I just put in some junk. I have one, two, three, four, five, and that's not the password. All right, well, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to first check, is the username there? It's the first thing I'm going to have to do. If the username's there, then I have to check the password. If the username isn't there, I just want to push them right back because maybe they think they've got an account and they don't. So I'm just going to push them back again to the new user page. All right. But if they have given me a valid username, all right, and then I, I've got to go run something like this. And this is going to run this, and it's going to run the actual password against basically what I entered. Does that make sense? And if it's true, it matched. So if it matched, all I'm going to do is, they're logged in now, I'm going to push them to the home page. And if it didn't work, so on an else, I'm just going to, again, push them back like I did before, just to the new user page. All right? Now, eventually what we'll do is we'll provide a message in there that says um, either your username or password were incorrect. And I've said this kind of thing to you before, and I'm saying it again. If the person got the right username but the wrong password, don't put in there your password is incorrect. Because then they think, oh, at least I know a username. Now I can try to dig through it. There literally are algorithms that you can run on different things that sometimes will take days but can figure out almost any password. <clears throat> and it, you've seen those already when you, when you get a uh, user, not a uh, uh, an auto-generated password, how they make no sense. That's one of the reasons it's like that. All right, Because what most people end up doing is they end up using and creating passwords that are something that's familiar to them. And, and this is never a good practice, what many people do is they end up using the same password all over the place. 
right? I, I'm, I've been guilty of that in the past. And again, I may have told you this, but I just want to mention to you, when I was a programmer for AT&T, I remember they called us into, in, in all of our whole department, they called us into a conference room for a meeting. We had the real huge conference room. I'd never been in there before. There were like 75 of us. And my boss's boss came in. He's a real little guy. He's probably not around anymore. Up to my shoulders, bald, Bernie Yokelson. He came in and he was, his face was beet red. What they had done is they hired two kids to come in and see if they could get into our passwords. And within one morning, they had cracked almost everybody's password, including my friend Red, uh, Rich. No joke, his password was ASDF, ASDF. We got literally screamed at by this guy because about a third of those people, they were working with the Defense Department. And so they had people could, could get in you know, and, and basically get in and look at their code. That wasn't a good thing. All right. So again, the bottom line is, you know, you should be prudent. There's different things, and there's two more things I want to show you than we are breaking. And the first one is, where is it? Um, oh, I showed you that. The, this is just something I found online. This isn't the best one. It's a quick way for hashing passwords using bcrypt. It's an article from medium.com. I'm going to send you a link to it later. But it explains in here what assault is, what salt rounds are, basically, in more depth and breadth of coverage than I just did. And it's not very long, all right? And then we'll look at this a little bit later, but when you are working in Mongoose, you can put validation in your schema. We're good, this is what we're gonna get into next week. So in other words, so notice that when you come in here, you can do something like not just give them an error, but give them the message that you want them to have. And notice there's a lot of built-in validators. For instance, you could come in, we may or may not do this, I don't know, or you can do this on your copy if you want. You could come in and say for a password, the minimum is eight characters and the maximum is 12. Something like that, or for a username, or for both. All right, you can set up enumerations. So in other words, for the drink, you have to enter one of these. <coughs> Remember that enumeration is basically a user-defined type. All right, so there, these are just some of the ones that are in there, and if you don't like them, you could even create your own. All right, because what you find after a while, other than min and max, et cetera, you know, I, I've, I've used this example before. If you remember back in the day when we were working on regular JavaScript and we did our first miles per gallon program, <clears throat> and we talked a little bit about try-catch statements. And I said, JavaScript, like other programming languages, has built-in things that it can catch. But it doesn't have everything. It doesn't have a miles per gallon out of range exception. All right, so you can write your own in much the same way you can do that in here. All right. So after the break, I'm going to see if I can fix this mistake I put in there and during the break. And, uh, and then, then we'll pick it up then. It's 104. Let's come back, please, at 120. Yeah. You're having a problem with that. Uh,